Let us start this lecture with a thought process by Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, who was a legendary scientist during in uh, before independence. And he says, it would be our worst enemy who would wish us to live only on the glories of the past and die off from the face of the earth in sheer passivity. By continuous achievement alone, we can justify our great ancestry. We do not honor our ancestors by the false claim that they are omniscient, had nothing more to learn. This is really a very great profound statement and we must be aware of this and try not to just glorify our past, but work so that our ancestors can really feel proud of it and we can justify our great ancestry. Let us recall what we learned in the last lecture. We had initiated discussion on flight performance of a rocket engine. Uh, considering its flight only in two dimensional plane. The expression in the process we derived an expression for total velocity change uh, during its flight, which consists of three terms namely space term, gravitational term and the drag term. Let us uh, look at uh, the equation we have derived that is delta v is equal to uh, minus i s p g naught m initial to m final d m by m minus 2 t b and that is g cos theta d t minus again 0 to T b d by m d t. So, uh, if you look at these terms is basically this is due to the space this delta v and this is the another term and this is a third term and this is due to the gravity term and this term is due to the uh, drag term. So, if you look at the total velocity is coming from this is the del change in due to the space and this is the gravitational term and this is the dark drag term. Question arises how we will basically integrate it and of course, the first term would not be that difficult to integrate it will be very straightforward, but if you look at the second term that is the gravitational term uh, for the change in velocity or in other words change in velocity of the vehicle due to the gravity effect which is having a parasite effect that means it will be uh, reducing the uh, velocity as such or negative effect. How we will uh, basically integrate it because the angle theta is changing if the vehicle is vertically fired then naturally the theta would be there, but however, it will make a small angle then there will be gravity turn. So, theta will be changing during the time of flight and g also will be changing during the flight of time because we know that earth's gravity will be changing along with altitude. We know uh, that that g will be changing by this relation so g r e divided by r e plus h where square and r e is the radius of earth or any other planet if you are considering and h 
is your altitude. Or the height uh, from the uh, surface of the earth. So, uh, g naught of course, we know that uh, the gravity ac acceleration due to gravity at the sea level conditions. So, this is changing and when you are integrating that means, g is changing and so also the theta will be changing unless we know the altitude at which the vehicle is there. So, we cannot really integrate that means, it is quite difficult to integrate. Keep in mind that therefore, what we do while integrating, we will be using basically something g cos theta as a constant, something remains constant over delta t, very small time scale time that you can assume for uh, certain calculations. But however, it will be not tried because at any instant uh, of time it will be changing. And if you look at uh, the drag, drag is can be expressed the drag force is equal to basically C D that is drag coefficient rho v square a f. This is drag coefficient. and rho is density of air or any other fluid through which the vehicle is moving and of course, V is the velocity of vehicle and A f is the frontal cross sectional area. Generally, for a missile application, the maximum cross sectional is being considered, one has to consider the representative cross sectional area for calculation. And if you look at this drag coefficient and so also the lift coefficient, which we have not considered in this calculations, will be dependent on this, if you look at drag is a function of the Mach number and it will be function of the beta, the angle of attack and of course, the Reynolds number and also it will be. So, let us look at uh, for a typical uh, missile applications, what we will be considering the variation of C D, the variation of C D and C L with Mach number for a typical missile for two angle of attack that is alpha this is your angle of attack. You will you can see that uh, angle of two angle of attacks are considered for this one is alpha is equal to 3 degree other is 10 degree and keep in mind that this uh, drag coefficient and uh, lift coefficient will be varying and this two data you can see from here. Uh, this is for your um, drag coefficient for angle 3 degree and this is for 10 degree. You can see that uh, drag is changing along with Mach number of course, it will be remaining almost constant in the subsonic flight, but in the high subsonic flight it will be changing that means, in the transonic regime something 1.2.82. 1.2 in this region, this is basically transonic regime. The it is changing very much, like the very very, and as a result, you cannot keep it, you cannot take it as a constant value, and of course, it will be at a supersonic speed. It will be also decreasing, but uh, after very high at high supersonic speed it will be remaining almost constant. So, uh, therefore, that has to be looked at and besides this if you look at the density is changing along with the altitude. So, if you look at rho is uh, equal to a is a constant and e power to the b h 1 by 1.5. 
and keep in mind that A is basically 1.2 and B is equal to 2.9 into 10 power t uh, minus 5 in SI unit. Of course, uh, density will be changing uh, along with the altitude uh, around at 30 kilometers. The density uh, becomes 1 percent of the actual value of density in the sea level. So, uh, therefore, one has to also know at what altitude you are having so that you will have to talk about this phase and you will be also knowing the velocity because velocity will be changing in each case as it is accelerating sometimes it will be decelerating also. So, therefore, it is very important and then as I told uh, what we will be doing we will be generally considering some average values or uh, range as their range is uh, you know is uh, certain range is I mean, and this effect will be more predominant only within the uh, maybe something around 30 or 35 kilometers only. Uh, so, therefore, uh, generally people use typical launch vehicle to be placed on the orbit, aerodynamical drag losses are typically quite small in the order of something 100 to 500 meter per second and gravitational of course, will be quite larger and it uh, uh, varies from 700 to 1200 meter per second depending on the shape of the trajectory to orbit and um, that one has to consider. What we will be looking at now the that is the change in velocity due to the space that means, if there is no gravitational force is there and the drag is not there and the change in velocity due to the thrust only that will be considered and that is the major portion which is contributed to the change in the uh, velocity of the vehicle. So, uh, we will be considering that uh, as I told that space velocity increment is the largest one and uh, let us look at how we can integrate it. So, uh, delta v if you look at as we have written earlier this is the space I will be using simply delta v is equal to minus i s p g naught l n d m by m and this is initial to final. So, if I look at that that will be i s p g naught l n m f by m i and I can write down this delta v space is equal to i s p z naught l n m i by m f final and this we call the mass ratio mass ratio is m i is nothing but your m i initial by final. So, therefore, this became i s p g naught l n m r and uh, so I can also write down keep in mind that i s p g naught is nothing but your v equivalent. So, I can write down that delta v space is equal to i s p g naught l n m r is equal to V equivalent G naught L n M r and this is a very important relation what we call basically the rocket equation. Of course, in some people also call the entire when you integrate the equation this as a rocket equation the entire equation including the uh, gravitational effect drag of drag but and this is also uh, is known as the Siewalski equation. S key equation because of fact that this equation was first derived by a Russian scientist known as 
the Konstantin Silovsky who had derived this equation in 1897. And uh, keep in mind that this is a very important relationship which says the change in velocity in the space is not depending on the fluid through which it is moving and it is not depending on the time duration, it is also not depending on the thrust being applied. However, it depends on the mass ratio and it depends on the specific impulse what uh, the engine will be producing. And uh, this mass ratio if you look at it is a very important term and it change in velocity terminal velocity will be a function of logarithmic of mass ratio it is not a linear. So, one has to be very careful about it and uh, it will be also dependent on the propellant uh, mass because if you look at m i if I write it down m i is equal to m f plus m p. Now, if I divide this expression by m i, m i this m i and keep in mind that this is basically the propellant fraction. This I call it as a propellant fraction p f fraction and we know this is nothing but your 1 by m r because already you have different m i. So, and this is equal to 1. So, therefore, I can write down this 1 is equal to 1 by m r plus p f. So, I can write down m r is equal to 1 by 1 minus p f. So, therefore, change in velocity delta v is basically function of the propellant fraction ln 1 minus 1 minus p f. I can write down this is basically I s p g naught. This is your equation 5 and keep in mind that if mass ratio is equal to 10, what is the meaning of that? Basically p f will be 1 minus 1 by m r is equal to basically 0.9 that means the 90 percent of 90 percent of the vehicle of total mass is for mass of propellant is for and whereas 10 percent of total mass is for is at the burnt out or is for structure and payload. So, uh, let us look at now the how does this velocity change it with respect to propellant uh, fraction for uh, various ISP. So, you can see that uh, this is your uh, change in velocity uh, and you can see that delta v is goes on increasing exponentially particularly when the mass propellant fraction is very higher. If I consider the ISP is 200, you can achieve the maximum of you know you can say 0.9 around here something uh, 4000 
kind of things you can get around around 0.9 if you look at 0.9 here 0.8 and 0.9 so 0.9 is a very conservative value so you will be getting something around 4 and 4000 and you cannot really go for this because uh, it is not possible to have any structural mass and payload mass so uh, however when you increase this uh, isp of 250 then you will get some increase in change in velocity but if you go on increasing that you will find something around 10000 of delta v of 10000 meter per second you can get when you will go for something isp of 450 so uh, that is uh, not enough really for taking the any object out of the earth so that you can uh, it is lower than the escape velocity either you can increase the isp of the uh, rocket engine or you can go for some other ways of doing that that uh, we'll see how we can really achieve within this the uh, ISP specification because uh, this is the maximum ISP of 450 you can get in liquid oxygen and hydrogen systems uh, that to cryogenic engine and at the uh, vacuum conditions and then you cannot really take care of that. So, uh, keep in mind that this we need to look at and then uh, one can go for better design so that instead of propellant fraction of point 9 one can go for maybe 0.95 or something like that for uh, however for the mission uh, man mission other thing one has to be careful uh, to give to this thing so we'll uh, see this thing later on how we will overcome this problem so uh, as i told that mass ratio is basically it is a ratio of final to the initial mass and that is equal to and the final mass will be payload uh, final mass basically will be uh, taking care of the payload structural and unused propellant some of the propellant will be there which will be uh, basically cannot be used further and uh, this in solid propellant we call it sliver mass and the liquid propellant we call eulage and we know that m r is equal to m naught by m b keep in mind that i had used basically this is initial mass by the final mass m b is your burnout mass m b is mass of the vehicle at burn out mass that means burn out mass when only pay load and structure and unused uh, propellant will be there and if you consider that uh, generally that 60 percent of mr mr of 60 percent uh, is used for tactical missiles and 10 percent for unmanned vehicles being used uh, mr and one cannot really get very high velocity as i told and uh, if you consider the total mass of the vehicle can be expressed as i will be using m naught is equal to ml plus ms and mp keep in mind that this is your structural mass and this is your payload mass and mp is your propellant mass we know all those things so if i and uh, burnt out mass if you look at is basically m l plus m s so if i uh, and that is the thing and if you look at m naught if i consider this expression m l plus m s plus m p and i divide this both the left hand side m naught and right hand side m naught and i will get this is propellant fraction this is your structural fraction and this is your payload fraction this is propellant fraction and this is your structural fraction and this is your uh, payload fraction
And now let us uh, look at delta v. We know that delta v for space, I am writing s and sometimes is equal to v equivalent ln m m r basically that is nothing but your m b. And if you look at m b, we know that m b is basically we can write down that m b is nothing but your l f and s f divided by m naught right. And keep in mind that this is uh, 1 is equal to l f plus s f plus p f. And now, I can write down this v equivalent l v n 1 minus l f plus s f. So, uh, let us say this is equation may be 4 and I can write down that that is l n 1 minus l f plus s f is equal to delta v s by v equivalent or simply I will be writing delta v. And then I can write down basically l f is equal to E minus delta V by V equivalent minus S F. And keep in mind that this I can say this is your equation 5. And if L F will be basically decreasing when delta V by V equivalent will be basically increasing, right. And L f will be decreasing when S f also will be increasing. So, that we will see and generally for a smaller payload values you know like for higher delta v by del equivalent. So, let us uh, vary this uh, thing and uh, let us uh, for different S f values we will be looking at how does this payload fraction is varying with the delta v by equivalent. So, uh, if you look at the payload fraction is varying with delta v by equivalent, you can see that for uh, different S f, but let, let us consider the S f 0 0.07 which is being generally used for the unmanned vehicles. You can see that as the delta v is decreasing, uh, this payload fraction is increasing that means, you can carry more amount of more uh, payload mass. And if a particular delta V q if it is let us say S f is decrease then the payload fraction also increasing. For example, if it is S f 0 0.015 and then it is going to 0 0.07 naturally payload fraction of the vehicle is increasing. So, this is the thing what you should keep in mind. And in the next lecture, we will be discussing about the flight trajectory and with this we will stop over. Thank you very much.